Hi there and welcome to uh, another of my little short videos on how to paint watercolours. This is the first lesson that I usually teach when I'm either teaching one-to-one, uh, -one, face to face or to groups or individuals or on Skype. And it's basically about um, appreciating how light affects um, a scene that you're looking at and trying to paint. Um, you can get full details of this on uh, my website www.artstevo.com and obviously you're looking at this on YouTube now so subscribe or leave comments. Um, there's going to be an ebook out in, uh, in the spring and full details are again on my website. Um, excuse the lighting conditions, I'm trying to, um, to describe this little orange that you see in front of you. Uh, so I've had to close the blinds just so that you could, uh, so I can demonstrate it a bit better. Um, so if you look at the orange now, the way, uh, the way that it stands uh, just where it is uh, under this light conditions, you can see that there's very little shadow, but what there is is, is below here and there's a little bit of a highlight on the top and that's because the, there's two windows in this room, one over this direction and another one uh, over here. Um, so there's very little um, emphasis on light and But if we change that now with a torch, You'll see what a difference this makes. So that's um, that's the torch on top, and you can see now that the highlight is um, it, this light is coming directly from above. So you can see that there's a there's a highlight on the top of the orange, and a shadow on the bottom of the orange. And you'll notice that if I change the direction um, of the torch, the shadow lengthens. So that's here and the highlight changes where it appears on the on the orange itself so you can come forward you can bring it lower down if you wanted a you know if it was a say an early morning sun or a, a late evening sun that you wanted to depict um, you can change the direction from the left and to the right so that just describes um, where the highlights are where the darks are on a scene and where the where the shadows are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set this up again and show you how to um, to paint that in real life and the the light will improve because I'll uh, I'll open the blinds to do that. So back in a moment. But just before I before I do that, uh, just before I um, show you how to paint this, um, if I could just describe that if you were looking at a scene. Um, there are several ways of, of simplifying the tonal values of what you're looking at. Um, let me just um, put this torch back on here again. And maybe you could try this um, at, in the comfort of your own home. Um, first thing that I usually try is, if I'm outside, try and half close your eyes. And that cuts, down, cuts out the, um, the detail of a scene. And it simplifies it into just uh, light and dark. Um, Try not to do it in public because people think you've got really bad eyesight or that you're a little strange. Um, so that's the first, that's the one that I tend to use. There's another couple of tricks that you can use as well. Uh, I think it was uh, Claude Monet that used to use uh, what's now being described as a Claude mirror. And if you take a piece of glass and paint it black and look at the reflection in that, um, in that painted mirror, it simplifies the um, the scene into simple tones, much like half closing your eyes does. Also, if you're working from a photograph, if you tip the monitor of your computer, you'll see that it also simplifies the tones. And you can also use a little trick on, you can use a little bit of um, software, um, say Adobe Photoshop, uh, to look at different effects. And, and that can simplify it just by altering the, the brightness and the darkness um, of the scene. So. Hopefully that's helped and I'll, uh, I'll show you how to paint um, a similar orange to this in a couple of minutes. Bye now. Okay, this is our orange now and um, this is it with the blinds up so hopefully it's not too bright for you. Uh, but the lighting's better. And what I'm going to do with this is uh, I'll just use the torch. There's two, uh, there's two windows here. There's one over there and there's one over there. So. Um, it's a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do when I paint this now is I'm going to paint it as if it was about there. 
So the shadow, the shadow will be over here, and the highlight will be on the left hand side. So I'm just going to paint that now. So I'll just set this up and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Um, so here we have our blank piece of paper, and I wouldn't normally draw um, something as simple as an orange, because it's just a circle, but let's just say that that's our orange. I'll draw it a bit heavier than I normally would, just so you can see it clearly on the video. So now we've got the basic shape of our orange. I've mixed some paint prior to turning the camera on it, it's just some red and some some gamboge which gives us uh, that kind of colour which is <coughs> about the orange, the colour of an orange and all you do to start with is fill your disc and try and get this as flat as you can I've actually got the the, the drawing board on an angle here so uh, just so you can see it clear on the video but you, if you did this flat uh, you wouldn't get those these dark bits here but we can use that to our advantage just going to take some of that moisture out of there. Okay, so what we want is a fairly even, uh, an even coverage of paint. And then, if you remember, the highlights are up here and the darks are down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift the highlights out. And this is just a moist brush, just uh, dried out on a little bit of, just taking some of that out before it runs. And then all you do is just lift out the paint from where the highlight is. And then you, again, you're just using clear water, just um, not too much. You don't want to be too wet, otherwise you'll end up with a cauliflower. And just mop out the paint there. So we've got light coming from this direction now, and it's denoted by this here. Oops, I said that denote word again. And then... Just for the purposes of this exercise, I'm just going to put a little bit of dark in the bottom here. So again, while well, the paint's still wet, <laughs> struggling to control this because it's on an angle. That's better. You've got to make sure that your paint you put on is, th is thicker in consistency. than the moisture that the paper's already on. Right, it just bleeds up into it. So we're now getting some kind of shadow on that darker side and it'll bleed up into the into the other damp paint. And then finally and this this is shadow, but it's there's also something called grounding which I like to use. And it just makes things sit. So I'm just taking it past there. And it just makes things sit in their in their landscape. So just a dark line along the bottom of anything that you draw will give you um, will give you that effect. And it'll just make it more realistic. So there we have our orange sat nicely on some kind of table and we'll just put a little pip. You can see how that just spreads, which is quite nice. And the drier the, the drier the paper is, the less it spreads. And that paper's just starting to dry there. And if you wanted to, so so that demonstrates how you can get a three-dimensional quality from from something that's on a flat piece of paper. So we've got highlights here, we've got darks here, we've got shadows here, and a little bit of grounding here, which will make it sit sit down. If you had that against something else, like a, let's say the orange was close to a wall, then when this is all dry, and I'll just do it now and try, and try and miss it just to demonstrate it, you would just do something like that. And then it gives the illusion that it's against the wall, so, but you would normally do uh, this edge touching the, the edge of the orange, but because it's damp I don't want it to bleed into it. Um, otherwise it'll just spread like wildfire. So that's basically how to make something three-dimensional out of um, by using highlights, darks, uh, shadows and, uh, and grounding. 
Um, if you want to see more of this, there's, uh, this, this is part of uh, an e-book that's coming out in the spring. Um, and this is, these are examples of it. I'll just uh, move the zoom out of the way. And this shows, so we do, you do the direction of your arrow, you do, you draw the shape, you fill the shape in, you lift the highlights out, add the darks here and here, and then add the shadows and the grounding. And it works with chickens, trees, um, <laughs> somebody said that looked like a lemon, I'm sure it's a chicken. Um, and also it works with clouds, um, so it's, it's exactly the same process and it's lifting highlights and adding darks. It works with three-dimensional things like houses and with things like uh, still life, like this jug here. Um, so if you want to pre-register for that ebook, it will be available in spring. Um, and if you just go to www.artstevo.com, uh, full details are on there. If you just click on the, on the links on the ebook page on my site, um, there'll be more on, on YouTube and if you want to leave comments, um, <laughs> keep them clean please, but if you want to leave comments um, and register, anything that I put on YouTube you'll be advised of. Um, so if you can just subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel which is Bedlam1954. Hope to see you soon, there'll be another one shortly. Bye bye now.